16, Acts chapter 16. Very familiar passage of scripture. Beginning at verse number 25. Amen. And I believe it is the custom here to stand. So once you have it, let it be known by rising to your feet. I'm not getting old, but I'm just saying I need it. <laughs> Acts chapter 16, verse 25. About midnight, Paul and Silas were praying and singing hymns to God, and the other prisoners were listening to them. Suddenly, there was a violent earthquake that the foundations of the prison were shaken. At once all the prison doors flew open and everyone's chains became loose. Verse 27, the jailer woke up and when he saw the prison doors open, he drew his sword and was about to kill himself because he thought the prisoners had escaped. But Paul shouted, don't harm yourself. We are all here. The jailer called for lights and rushed in and fell trembling before Paul and Silas. He then brought them out and asked, Sirs, what must I do to be saved? Let us pray. If you will pray with me in song. Annoy Fall on me, anointing. Fall on me. Let the power of the Holy Ghost fall on me. fall on me anointing fall on me anointing fall the power of the Holy Ghost fall on me, anointed fall on me. As you take your seat, we're going to preach from the subject, Double Trouble, Double the Blessing. Double trouble, double blessing. My brothers and my sisters in Christ, as we look at our text for today, we find ourselves in a very familiar passage of scripture that the, the book of Acts, the only book of history within the New Testament of the Bible, helps us to understand what it means to be empowered by the Holy Spirit and how the Holy Spirit empowers us to fulfill the great commission that Jesus gave to the disciples within the last chapter of the book of Matthew. What it means to be empowered by the Holy Spirit. This is an excellent opportunity for us to look at the ministry of the Holy Spirit, but it also gives us an opportunity to look at the ministry of the church. 
may I make a point here and to let us know here at Macedonia, it is impossible to do the work of the church without the power of the Holy Spirit. I wonder, can I get a witness, somebody? It is impossible for us to do the work of the church without the empowerment of the Holy Spirit. But let me stick a pin right there because when we look at what it means to have the Holy Spirit or the Holy Ghost, many times within the, the church and even within our tradition, we have a misunderstanding of the ministry of the Holy Spirit. Many times we think about the Holy Spirit as that thing that makes you jump or that thing that makes you shout or that quickening if you will or that thing. But that is not the ministry of the Holy Spirit. That is just a praise. The Bible says that everything that has breath ought to praise God. Everything ought to praise God. But the Holy Spirit is that third person of the, of the Trinity that lives and abides and dwells within the hearts of the believers. It is the Holy Spirit that is our teacher. It is the Holy Spirit that is our leader. It is our guider. It is the one that keeps us in tune with the Father. And it is impossible for us to do the work of the church without the indwelling power of the Holy Spirit. Because when the Holy Spirit is on the inside of us, when the Holy Spirit is on the inside of the church, then miraculous things can happen. Can I get a witness, somebody? When, the, when we are empowered and led by the Holy Spirit, then the, those things that were once thought of as impossible becomes possible. Those things that we thought we could not do can be done with the, with the power of the Holy Spirit. And I don't know about you, but I thank God for the Holy Spirit. Because it is the Holy Spirit that allows us to go into unknown places and to be effective in ministry. It is the power of the Holy Spirit that helps us to be able to speak the language wherever we go. And that was the instrumental or the powerful thing about the day of Pentecost. It, it was the fact that people who did not speak certain languages began speaking other tongues. And they were able to be able to be understood by one another. It is the power of the Holy Spirit living on the inside of us that allows us to be effective in ministry. And one thing about the Holy Spirit is when it's on the inside of a person, you know it. I don't know about you, but I've gotten now to a place in life and a place within ministry where I want to be effective. I don't know about you, but I don't want to go through the motions. I'm tired of going through the motions. You know the motions, don't you? You come to church on Sunday at 11 o'clock. You put on your church shoes. You put on your church clothes. You, you do everything that is considered to be churchy. You learn how to speak on cue. You even learn how to shout on cue. You learn how to speak in tongues on cue. I don't know about you, but I am tired of the motions as usual. But what the Lord needs for such a time as this is for us to be effective in ministry. Because there is too much at stake for us not to be effective in what we are doing. It is time for us to be effective. Because there's somebody that needs to hear the good news. There's somebody that needs to hear that God loves them. There's somebody who needs to hear that God cares about them. There's somebody who needs to hear that regardless of what situation they find themselves in life, there is somebody who is willing to reach way down and pick them up and turn them around. I wonder do I have five people in the house of the day that can say, I know that God is a turnaround God. I know that God is a heart fixer. I know that God is a mind regulator. I know that God will reach way down and pick you up because he picked me up. Oh, and he turned me all around. I wonder is there anybody here that can 
essential that we have the Holy Spirit moving in, on the inside of us so that we can be effective in ministry, so that we will go through the motions and that we might bring visible fruit yeah. and that our works might produce visible fruit. Yeah. We must declare war on the devil and we must declare and decree that we're going to tear down the very kingdom of the devil. Because the enemy has come to steal, kill, and to destroy. When we look at the state of our young men, when we look at the state of our young women, when we look at the state of our schools, when we look at the state of our nation, when we look at the state of the world, we need the power of the Holy Spirit to move in us, move through us, so that we might go in and let God arise and our enemy. I wonder, can I get a witness somebody that is ready to be effective in ministry? And so the book of Acts helps us to understand what it looks like when we are truly effective in ministry. As we look today in our text, we find ourselves on the, looking at the journey of two, uh, Paul and Silas. Paul, this apostle to the Gentiles. Paul, this man who had a, a, a life-changing experience on the road to Damascus. Paul, although he had not walked with the Lord while he was living here on earth, he, he, this was a man who had an encounter that changed his life for the rest of his life. And when he was converted, God gave him a special assignment to go out and to let people know that when, when Jesus said, for God so loved the world, he meant the whole world. He meant both Jew and Gentile. When God says that he loved the world, that meant everybody that was in the world. It doesn't matter what color your skin is. It doesn't matter what your background is. It doesn't matter what neighborhood you live in. It doesn't matter what sins you committed in the past. When God says he so loved the world, that meant everybody. He was sent to tear down the philosophy that the God of the Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob was only a God for Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. And I don't know about you, but I'm so glad today that, that the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob is a God for whosoever will. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. And so as the 16th chapter continues, we see, we see uh, Paul and Silas dealing with a situation because there was at the place of prayer a girl who had a spirit of divination. Uh, and that spirit of divination was where she was able to predict the future. But you see, church, we must be very careful, just as we must be careful as to the power of and what the ministry of the Holy Spirit is. We must equally be careful as to what it means to be a prophet. Because many times when people look at the ministry of a prophet, we, we think of somebody who is able to tell the future. But can I break somebody's theology right now? Because we have too many prophets, P-R-O-F-I-T-S, in the land. And not enough prophets, P-R-O-P-H-E-T-S. Many times we have poor mongers in the pulpit that will offer you a word if you pay them. If you get in the $20 line, if you get in the $50 line, if you get in the $100 line, then I'll give you a $20 blessing. But I don't know about you, but I'm so glad salvation is free. Prayer is free. Deliverance is free. And if you get connected to the right man, to get a word 
Let the church save money. Because she was able to tell the future. And, and her owners used that in order to make them some money. Once again, you must be careful if, that the gift is truly a gift. And you must be careful how you use the gift if it is a gift. And so because this began to make them money, and this girl used the spirit of divination, amen, to call out Paul and Silas, Paul and Silas had to let everybody know who, what power they were using. And so... And so they began to, to speak to this girl and then she began to be delivered from the spirit of divination. But one thing about it is, is that if somebody is using you for your money, amen, her owners were not happy about that. And so they said, we got to do something about Paul and Silas. They saw their gravy train. They saw their money train leaving them. Amen. They said, we got to do something about Paul and Silas. Paul and Silas found themselves in trouble. But one thing that I like about it is that Jesus said, don't worry about it if you are persecuted for righteousness sake. Because those who are persecuted for righteousness sake to call themselves blessed. And so here are Paul and Silas. Because they were doing the work of the Lord, they found themselves in prison. But remember, I told you, double trouble, there is a double blessing. And so not only did they find themselves in trouble because they delivered this girl from the spirit of divination, but they found themselves in trouble because now here they are in jail. But the question is, what do you do when you don't know what to do? What do you do when you find yourself locked up because of no fault of your own? You see, church, I'm so glad that Paul and Silas give us a model as to how we are to behave when it seems like all the odds are against us. Paul and Silas give us a model and a theology, if you will, and what to do at midnight. All of us in our lives have found ourselves in a midnight situation. But you see, church, midnight is not Midnight is not the darkest hour because there's still some more dark after midnight. But one thing that I found out about midnight is that it still might be dark at midnight. But at midnight, there is a change from today to tomorrow. At midnight, there is a change. And so when I look at Paul and Silas, the Bible records that around midnight instead of complaining about the situation at midnight instead of worrying about how they were going to get out at midnight instead of saying Lord Lord how am I going to get out of here but they said the Bible says at midnight instead of trying to devise their escape plan the Bible says at midnight when all them. When all the odds were against them, the Bible says that Paul and Silas decided to have prayer meeting. You see, church, if you ever been against the odds, if you ever had, uh, if you ever had your back against the wall, you know there's power in prayer meeting. Or as we say in today's term, there's power in praise and worship. Because the Bible began offering up prayer and singing hymns unto God. Church, I'm so glad that there's power in our prayer and there's power in our praise. I wonder, is there anybody here? Have you ever had to call on the Lord in the midnight hour? Have you ever had to call on the Lord when you didn't know what to do? Have 
Lifting him.